right, and we're back, and as promised, we're going to bring Wayne Lonestein into the studio right now. Wayne, it's good to have you here. Thanks for joining us. Well, my pleasure, Jay. Great to have a, a legal mind such as yours in the studio anytime. Hey, listen, uh, you know, before we get started, uh, we start every interview with uh, famous Bernard Pivu. He was a French philosopher. He had the famous 10 questions, but we're a nonprofit, so we can't afford all 10. We can only do four and a half. It's, it's a redacted, heavily redacted and modified uh, list of questions. And I'm going to start, Wayne. Uh, don't let this throw you. It's the last half of a question that we were asking previously. So I'm just going to pick up right in the middle of the question, and I'll help you out if I, if I need to. So most desired taking dancing lessons with. That's the end. Survey says, my wife. <laughs> uh, so for you, uh, most desired taking dancing lessons with? My wife. Oh, there you go. Good answer. Google or Bing? Neither. Neither. All right. You know, I haven't heard neither yet, but I still haven't heard Bing. I'm holding out for Bing. If you could change one thing about your education, what would it be? MBA. Don't know enough mm. about business. Wish I did. Oh, that's a good answer. Uh, what is your favorite smell? Mm, in and out Burger. Oh, good answer. Oh, you just got me. <laughs> oh, wow. When you get to heaven, who would you most like to take tea with? Winston Churchill. Ah, that's a great answer, too. Wayne Lonestein, author, inventor, expert on streaming piracy, not privacy, had to practice that all afternoon, um, crime and censorship, social media and drones. Your expertise is, is deep and wide, and we're just scratching the surface. But some of our audience uh, is likely familiar with, you know, Napster back in the day, and they when they think of pir piracy, they might think of like BitTorrent or Pirate Bay. But tell us about your world of streaming, stealing, and sharing. Oh, well, no problem, Jay. And, uh, you know, like the commercial says, uh, I'm no expert, really. I just slept at a Holiday Inn Express last night. But more <laughs> importantly, I am a part owner at the Privacy Co-op. Hey, uh, all right. I work for you. <laughs> yeah, you do. You do. And I appreciate that. And it made a lot of sense to me. And it's certainly uh, something that I came ar around to. So I started back last century in protecting pay-per-view broadcasts when Mike Tyson used to fight. And it was pretty much limited to cable and satellite and people would splice wires together or have a smart card hack. And we would uh, investigate, we still do it for pay-per-view events, movies, all sorts of things in the commercial setting and in some residential settings. Basic concept is like uh, uh, you have a right to something that you own, just like the privacy co-op would say. So uh, what we started to do is engage in uh, telling people, educating, listen, you know, you can't steal it, you can't take it, and you have to pay for it, just like you're attempting to do uh, quite earnestly with the co-op. And then uh, as the centuries kind of blended, uh, along came the internet, I said, you know what, I'm a lawyer. Uh, I'm now trying to become a recovering lawyer. So I said, I need to learn some new tricks because it's not cable television, it's not satellite, it's going to be the internet. So I went back to school, uh, got a degree uh, in cyber forensics and uh, information assurance, and then I got a master's degree at Penn State University in Homeland Security and information assurance. Wow. So I now know where all the smart people like you are and how to reach them, and that's what makes me dangerous. Not my knowledge, but the people I know. So uh, that's where I am, and along comes in 2016, the piece de resistance. Periscope, which was eventually purchased by Twitter very quickly, and Meerkat. These were mm. two instant streaming, so you could hold up your phone, I'm on the green screen, and either be a recorder or, or a viewer or a, a streamer. One click, the perfect piracy tool. I gave a speech in 2016 at the London Stock Exchange where I played for many European rights owners, soccer, uh, uh, 
they call it football, rugby, cricket. And I said, mm. folks, this is going to be a problem for you. And they said, no, no, no. You know, it's websites like the Pirate Bay and things like that. I said, no, 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 no. Everybody has a cell phone, a smartphone. So everybody can take advantage of that with the camera and either stream what they're seeing. And instead of like we talk about, let's say, Napster peer to peer, with social media streaming, it can be peer to peer or it can be peer to millions. And it can happen yeah. instantly. And that's what I called nano piracy, the viral spread. And since the day, March 26, 2015, when Periscope and Meerkat launched, I have been evangelizing the goods, the bads, and the really ugly of social media live streaming. And uh, fast forward, one of the biggest issues uh, that's come to the fore is uh, the fan companies and who's in charge of the stream. And mm. they have the ability to block the stream up, to damn it, to divert it, just like nature, okay? Wow. And there's being a flooding sort of sensation now behind the dam. They're doing everything they can do to plug that dam up, put the finger in the dike, like the old story uh, from the Dutch boy. Uh, but concepts like privacy co-op, uh, there are many legal theories uh, of smarter people than I, including the concept of uh, Marsh versus Alabama, which was from 1943. I did a post on it yesterday. Basically, where the company store owns the main street, they become really a de facto government, a de facto state. Mm. If they are a state, then we get into the 14th and First Amendment. And there have been cases where the court system has said, you know what? They have such ubiquitous control over speech. And there's no question they do. Uh, listening to you and Rex and, and uh, previously, they do. And every story we've heard tonight, they are the company store. Okay. Yeah. Back yeah. In, in a very revenue. Westphalian, in a very Westphalian sense, right? They are Absolutely. sovereign. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, First Amendment protects <clears throat> us against the federal government encroaching on speech, free expression. Fourteenth, by adopting the Bill of Rights into the states, so state action. So we're going to call this, and the theory is de facto state action, and wow. that would be the fan companies. So if I'm a business listening to you right now, I just heard something new. I, I heard, you know, first the first thing that I heard you is um, I, I've got a, a some sort of pay-per-view, some sort of live stream that I've worked my tail off to generate. And what I'm hearing is that some bozo on one of these platforms could just use a cell phone or, or software like OBS, which is free, and they could just take that, that stream rebroadcast it into their page on one of these platforms let's say facebook and i and instantly get millions of viewers so they're getting millions of viewers i'm getting shafted i'm not making a penny but the thing that i just heard new from you was that at the same time facebook who's controlling that dam may be able to just shut that stream off and say this is actually something we don't want to promote and so therefore nobody's going to see it you're going to get one viewer is, well, is that right it, it, it is their capability, but it's not their business model. Yeah. Facebook, yeah. YouTube, Twitter, their business is eyeballs. Mm. So what they do is they make content owners, let's say the football, soccer, cricket, boxing, whatever it is, millions and millions of illegal views happen every day. Mm. You don't see on their 10Ks or whatever their quarterly filings are with the SEC, Oh, by the way, XYZ percentage of our viewers were watching pirated content. These are publicly traded company engaging, in my opinion, so nobody gets blocked. And I recommend everybody, if you're posting, put those words in there, in my opinion. Okay? You won't be liable for your opinion so far, although the world's changing. You might, get, you might get banned for your opinion. You but, banned, yeah. <laughs> but that may give you rights. That may yes. give you rights, okay? You're not saying a fact checker can't say your facts are wrong if you're saying it is my opinion. It is not fact. Very important from libel law also. Mm, mm, so Very those, true. Yeah. Those companies have tools where they decide who to shut off and who not to and how long it takes. So if you're in a boxing match, 
and a streamer puts up, and they do, these bots put up every round, before they even get to taking them down, those streams have 2,000, 3,000. And somewhere wow. they drag their feet, but they're protected. 230 is a very big protection for big tech and social media, uh, where they can't be held liable for any wrong. It's oh, wow. It, I, I, you just taught me something else. I, I'm very familiar with 230, and, and I understand the different angles people are taking on that. But this is the first time I've heard it protects piracy. Oh, totally. By the wow. platforms. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you a question. So I'm I'm one of those businesses. I'm getting ripped off. The the piracy is happening. Is there harm to me? Are there harms that I could say, hey, this is a harm? Are there torts that are involved with something like that? Well, absolutely. In the common law, there are torts, and that's what VFT was built for. So we can crawl uh, all the major platforms through the front door. We don't want Cambridge. We don't want backdoor. Just like a user and say, hey, what's out there? Okay, five hundred streams every fifteen seconds. And we can capture what they tell us. So just like a broadcast on Facebook says live, the duration is, and how many viewers. Just the public information. We can also get what public viewers have put their names in as liking, disliking, or commenting. Fair mm. game. It's the public square. So we are totally transparent. We are only taking the data these companies put out there to the public. Not a shred more. Okay? Wow. So there's no privacy there. There's no GDPR there. There's no CCPA. We don't steal or take anything. No personal information. But what we do is say, you know, Jay, your broadcast was restreamed illegally on X platform. And we said on that platform, we documented with screenshots, with the URL, it was for 20 minutes. And there were viewership ranging from 10 to 30, but the uniques ended up at 5,000. There's your damages. There's your damages, there's the harm. There's the harm, and in addition, did you know that they actually <clears throat> blanked out and pixelated your particular logos, okay, for the co-op? And they put somebody else's in there who's monetizing wow. as subscribers. So they are ambush hijacking on live streaming ambush advertising if you will that's their business model and who makes a lot of money well the youtuber or the facebook streamer makes some where do you think the majority goes the house always wins and the, yeah it's not hurting them to have it's million. not hurting them to have millions of viewers is it no in fact it helps them quite a bit they do, just wow. think about those numbers x billion people watch facebook or twitter's periscope or twitter live Ask yourself, how many of those viewers watch the crime? Somebody commits suicide? Somebody, uh, you know, uh, engaging in human trafficking? We've documented all of it. But the billions are in movies, TV, and most importantly, sports. Wow. Billions yeah. You're staggering my mind. And, and we've already seen Google on this particular topic, at least it's related, uh, I, th I believe it was Australia they were trying to pass some legislation to say, hey, if you're going to dip into our news sources and show them as streams uh, directly, you need to, you need to pay uh, some sort of, uh, you know, royalty to these news agencies. And what did Google do in return? They just said, hey, we're going to cancel search for all of your citizens. You, you, you just won't be able to search for something in times of emergency. And, and they yeah. buckled the last time I heard. They caved to that. They just said, okay, no moss. You know? Well, and that was actually Facebook was the real bad actor there who mm -hmm. was retransmitting Australia's Sky News. All mm -hmm. right. So mm -hmm. now we're talking a big company and not paying them for the content. Yet Facebook was selling ads and everything like that. So now you have a nation, a sovereign nation, Australia, mm -hmm. going to war with its ability to broadcast or have any communication on Facebook because Captain Z said, nah. We're just going to take our ball and go home. They wow. did relent, but this is now an international conflict area where the fang companies are more powerful than nations. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting that. So, so, and you know, I could talk to you all night long, but in the in the precious couple of minutes that we have left, 
Uh, two thoughts. Number one, if I'm a business that this is happening to and I've got harm, right? Do I have remedy? Is there something I can do to take action here? Well, we built VFT for one particular reason, self-help. If somebody's saying a lie about you, live streaming, an incorrect fact or stealing, our piracy, anti-piracy clients, our patents tell us, or our patents allow us to put in the live chat automatically messaging. This is a pirated broadcast. Mm. You may not know, but, and many people don't because Facebook and the other, in my opinion, companies don't do a good job of telling them it's a pirated broadcast. So we put a message in the chat stream saying, oh, by the way, uh, let's say this particular corporation, this boxing league or this football league, you're watching a pirated broadcast. And we put in a redirection link to a legal source so people can go there. When you put sunshine as the transparency antiseptic, we drive thousands and thousands of viewers. And in particular cases where they're stealing somebody's, we will make people leave once they know it's not a legal activity. And most mm. importantly, uh, we've advised these companies, that's what we, we do, and we've kind of locked horns, but I have data from the last six years. So I'm more than willing to go to a court and say, oh, by the way, you don't like what I'm doing? Well, here's the evidence with screenshots of billions of pirated instances. I'm sure various injured parties uh, would like to know about that. So we're a yeah. self-help tool. You've got to help so yourself. How do, our, how do our viewers find your tool? Well, how do they find the, the it's VFT? proprietary, but you can certainly contact us at info at vfts-solutions.com. You can also find us on LinkedIn. And we do have a website. It's specifically designed to tell you nothing. So gotcha. because we get visits from all over the world. Far I, would, I totally get that. So That's we smart. like to uh, keep it simple, and I like to be stupid. So it's been wow. really a thrill to be with you. And Jay, you're really doing important work because the copyrights I'm talking about, the intellectual property I'm talking about, you're offering that to all the privacy co-op people to enforce their own human copyright. It's just like, a, a, you know, it's fine for a movie studio to sue people for stealing. Why is it not fine for Jay to not enforce his privacy rights against these same people? Makes no exactly sense. Exactly right. I, I, I so with you on that, and I really appreciate the plug on that. Wayne Lonestein, it's been fantastic having you on the show this evening. Jay, thank you so much. I really appreciate all the good work you do, and I hope everybody stays safe and healthy out there. Sounds great. Thanks.